In the last video, I talked about causal relationships. And in this video, I'd like to talk about how we use those two different causal relationships to create two uh, fundamental or basic causal loop diagrams. Now, I've done a couple of things in the background before I got here, before you got here, because if I drew everything in the video, the videos would get exceedingly long. So what I did was I went into perspectives and I redefined, redefined, redefined the definition of the red and blue. Uh, I defined this to be a type blue and this to be a type red. And then I added the definition to them so that, that this is blue and this is red and it adds to or subtracts from so that there's a legend appropriate for it. So if I wanted to create another connection in the future, if I just went from here to here and then I selected this and said this is blue, then it would go ahead and make it blue. So I it's just, you know, once you get them defined, then, then it's quite easy. I also went in and redefined the elements to be of a different size, and I put the text inside of them. In terms of how I did that, if you look at advanced, it says element, which means all elements, size 40, and the label placement is center. There, There is a crib sheet for what all of these CSS commands are. I use it sometimes, though more often than not, what I do is I simply find some map that does something that I like, and I do Alt-S, and I look at their definition of the way that they have decorated things, and I recycle their definition. So if I look, I looked at the Hawaii Quality of Life map and did an Alt-S and looked at it and says, oh, okay, so they go ahead and say for the tags white they do a label placement of center so that's how i figured out that you should do label placement of center there are so many of these css commands that i doubt if the developers actually remember all of them um, i typically have a few of them that i use repeatedly that I sometimes remember and I write those down and keep myself a crib sheet. Sometimes I go to the reference page and I'll put the reference page in the, the external references for this particular lecture, but it's here on the help file and it's down here called CSS property reference. And, it, and I've asked them to update this because I think there's about a dozen more that aren't currently on the sheet. But for each one, it says bullseye color, and it says that's applicable to elements, and, and you mouse over this, and it tells you what that particular, what the options are and what that option does. So, but really, I wanted to talk about causal loops here. So this, this is called a reinforcing or growth causal loop, where some, some element adds to some other element, and as a result of that, that element adds to the initial element. So it creates a reinforcing set of activities. In this particular one that I've done, it's a savings account. The amount of money in the savings account has an influence on the interest, and the interest then adds to the savings account, and this produce, produces a sense of growth. Now, I talked before about there being three types of entities in Kumu, elements, connections, and loops. Well, loops are things that you define based upon um, a group of selections. So I'm going to select this connection, hold down the shift key, and select this connection. And notice now that it also says add loop. And I'm going to call this R1 growth. So that I now have a, a loop label. Notice that this is selected. It's R1 growth, and it says the loop type. So a loop is like everything else. It has a title. It has a description. It has type, and the ability to have tags and attributes that we'll talk about later. 
it's typical to sequence the loops in your model so that someone knows how to read them and what kind they are. So while this is a reinforcing growth loop, the other type of loop is a balancing or goal-seeking loop, which is the structure is given some desired value and some current value. The difference between the two of those creates a gap, and that gap is the impetus for some action that's intended to cause the current state to move in the direction of the desired state. And once the current state reaches the desired state, the gap is zero, so that there is no more action, and therefore the current state no longer changes. So this is so what it shows is that as the current state approaches the desired state, it subtracts from the gap. Now that the assumption here is that the wa the desired water level is greater than the current water level. You could run a balancing loop in reverse, whereby the desired water level is less than the current water level, so that um, the, the gap would be negative and the action would make it less negative until it gets to zero, and then the action stops. But that's, you know, you can run them in either direction. But to define this loop, if I select this connection, hold down the shift key and select the rest of the connections that are part of this, I can then go ahead and call this B2 balancing so that now this is, this is a balancing loop. And what you now have is an understanding of the only two kinds of structures that exist. There is either a growth structure or a balancing structure. No matter how complex or apparently complicated the causal loop diagram that you run into, it's really only some number of growth and balancing structures together combined to create what it is that you're looking at. If we go and look at the the Hawaii quality of life map. At this level, notice that it says R18 urgency food and R8 non-systemic loop and, and R6 and R2. And almost all of these are reinforcing loops. There must be, oh, here's a B10 family resilience loop and a B9 community cohesiveness loop. This is this is a higher level abstract of a lot more detail that's elsewhere. And if you click on this, notice it's, it gives you a description of it and says, click here to view the loop within the social and cultural map. This particular project has a whole set of maps associated with it. So that this is the overall abstract and these are all levels of detail. So if I select this and then go here and tell it I want to view this, it takes me to look at B9, but it also talks about B10 and R11. And I can't quite tell where B9 is, but if I mouse over B9, notice that it dims everything else and it shows just the elements that are part of that loop. I mean, this is, this is another part of Kumu that I absolutely love. And it allows me to look to quickly understand what's really part of the loop. If I go back here and do this, notice that it dimmed the all of the R1 growth loop and is only showing me the B2 balancing loop elements. The same way with R1 growth. So it's easy in the in the mixed in the midst of a very complex array of connections, you can very quickly sort out what's actually supposed to be part of the particular loop that you want to pay attention to. And I'm not sure I quite understand what this one is doing in terms of showing both, uh, both B9 and R11, unless there's some way that the two of them interact together. But, um, you know, Sometimes other people's maps are uh, far more difficult to understand than your own. I would advise that that um, after this video, 
the the Hawaii quality of life map is actually linked in as an external resource for you to go and, and wander around in the map um, just because it's informative looking at the way that other people did things. Um, and then I can go ahead and, and back up and go back, back, and finally get back to the original map that I started on, usually, uh, and then do a zoom to fit. So the thing to remember is there are, there are two loops which you use to define all interactions in a causal loop diagram. And it's either a gro growth loop or a balancing loop. It's recommended that you sequence the loops, indicating whether they're reinforcing or balancing loops, so that people understand what order to read the diagram in. Think of it as, as a story that someone is reading, and the, and the labels help them understand what direction it's supposed to go in, or how they're supposed to read the story. Now, the thing about growth structures is the growth structure itself is always trying to grow something. So if you label it, if we label this as R1 savings, it's now telling me what this loop is attempting to grow. And if I label, label this as B2 water level, I know the goal that this loop is intending to seek. So that from looking at the label, I get a sense of the intent of the whole loop simply from looking at the label without having to look at the detailed pieces and infer the meaning of the loop from the pieces. It just, you know, if, if you attempt to make your models understandable to other people, <laughs> they, they tend to ask fewer questions or you have to explain them less if you actually develop them so they're understandable. Uh, if, if you're just doing it for yourself, you do it however you want to. Um, though you may go back to it six months or a year later and ask yourself what it was that you were thinking when you developed this model. So you often, once you say that this is savings, you might write a description of this particular loop and attach that description to the loop itself and write a definition of, of this loop and attach it to the loop profile page. And you might also have definitions of the individual elements. And at times, you actually need to write descriptions of what the relationship actually means. It depends upon the complexity of what it is that you're trying to describe. So those are the, the basic two loops. Think of them as Lego building blocks out of which you create everything else. Um, and we'll look at using them, using these two loops, extending the connections of them in another video to, to show you more intricate, involved structures and, and how the loops come into play. So hope you found this meaningful, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.